since when I came home farming uh, and the, where we were able to get the big gains at the start was by maximizing days of grass um, and that pushes you to a certain level. Uh, we often gra we, we regularly graze well in excess of 300 days a year here. Uh, we graze when conditions aren't ideal, uh, like, like a lot of farmers around the country. Uh, but I think the, the, gra the grass kind of plateaued in where we were pushing the herd. Uh, and what we're pushing for now is genetic gain, and we've been doing that since we've expanded. Um, last year we got a 9.5% increase in milk production. Uh, and that was solely down to genetics coming into the herd, better genetics and it's something we've really, really focused on. I strongly believe there's another four to five years in getting the herd to where we want them. So our, our, bre our breeding program here is we keep, uh, last year we kept 40 heifer calves um, out of 70. They were all genotyped, we went through the data. Uh, knew what we needed to keep within the herd uh, and I suppose because we've expanded for so long I spent so many years expanding that I don't want a, a, an overly young herd too I need maturity in it so as we're adding high EBI um, heifers to the herd we're also trying to peel out the cows that aren't as productive that aren't as pos profitable every year uh, and I think that's where we really see the gains. If you look at the first and second lactations, their production would be very close to what uh, s some of the weaker, more mature cows are, and, and even above it. Um, and that's solely down to the fact that they've got the genetics behind them. But I think the other thing that we found with the herd too is by really focusing on breeding, which we've done since 2012, We've been able to tighten our calving pattern. We started off with a 31 week calving spread. Now we're 86% uh, six week calving. Uh, and we also find that those high genetic merit cows, uh, they're going calf faster. Uh, so generally our breeding season here runs for 12 weeks. There's about nine weeks of that AI before a beef bull is left off. Um, and I mean, we calved seventy-seven percent of the herd in four weeks last year. So, yes, the workload is is, is a challenge, but it's only on a short space of time. Uh, and at the end of the day, we need to run a profitable business. And uh, having a tight calving spread, maximising days of grass, that's that's where you get the gains in production. And uh, the co co cows are grazing for three hours a day here. Um, they don't go back on the same piece of ground again. So. It may look like they're doing a small bit of damage. That's very, very minimal. We've grazed in worse springs this year than this, uh, and, and we've got them out twice a day. And I suppose my focus every morning is when I when I hit the milking parlor, the cows are going to grass. Um, and unless there's torrential rain falling, once milking is finished, the cows literally do go to grass, uh, and they get those two and a half to three hours of grass. I mean, that's a, that, once the cows don't travel on that again, that's going to recover perfectly. Um, yeah, they're not gra grazing out, but I mean, like, look at the, the challenge is uh, if we tighten them up more, they would probably do a little bit more harm. Uh, we have to get grass in the diet for the cow, but also to, to get the platform grazed off. I, d I don't believe we're, uh, we have enough graze at the moment and we're hoping that the weather will tighten fast. But like, if you look at if, if you look over there, uh, there was two grazings taken off that paddock uh, and uh, it's recovered well and there's, there's good regrowth on it. So um, that cover's a little bit too high for the wet weather at the minute and that's uh, that's why we pulled away from it. Uh, but I'd hope in the next week that we can really get stuck into the grazing block and graze hard. Uh, and look, at the end of the day, we as farmers, we have to reduce emissions. Why do we want to maximize days of grass? It's the most carbon efficient way uh, to produce milk. We are, uh, we have the lowest emissions in the Northern Hemisphere and, and yes, we have no heavy industry in Ireland. So essentially on paper at the moment, we're being told that we produce 34% of Irish emissions, but Grass sequesters carbon, uh, 
and while there's no solid research in Ireland at the moment to give us credit for that, uh, there is a lot of research uh, starting to happen and there's a lot of research that's been undertaken globally and by intensively grazing grass wards it's it's highlighted that it's the maximum you can maximize the amount of carbon you can sequester into the soil um, plus look we're producing a natural product we're food producers uh, we want to be the best as what we what we can do and I think the the general public want to know where their food comes from but also want to know that cows get out and they're not stuck in the sheds the whole time they get out and they graze and it's something we're noted here for in Ireland as having uh, a highly efficient system of food production. At the moment we have 40% calved, uh, there's 80% of the heifers calved. We sinked all the heifers last spring, uh, so we actually, they calved down just at the start of calving uh, and they actually settled into the parlour a lot easier because we were able to give them that much, that little bit of time in the parlour. There wasn't any 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 big numbers of cows milking at the time, um, and I think in the next this this week is kind of peak calving for us. So I believe we'll be by the end of next week we'll be close on 70% calved, uh, and after that it slows down. It starts to slow. Uh, March is a very quiet month for us calving. Uh, it's a, bit, a busy month in February. A lot of people don't agree with ha tight calving patterns due to labour shortages anymore. Uh, but I firmly believe we work hard for one month and we knock, we knock the bulk of it out. Uh, and the workload settles fairly quickly. Breeding season will start you know, on the 26th or 7th of April here. Uh, at the moment we're looking at what bulls we're going to use for the year. We'll be using a team of high genomic sires. Uh, and we'll select, looking at the calving difficulty for heifers, we'll select what we want to use on the heifers. The heifers will be synchronised again this year. Uh, and we only use high EBI genomic sires on the heifers. Uh, we want to maximize our genetic gain. It's worked for us a number of years. Mightn't work for everyone, uh, but we're, we do put a lot of work into looking at calving difficulties and selecting selecting those bulls for the heifers, and we never have tr an issue with calving heifers here. Um, and generally what we do from the start of breeding is a cow that we don't want to see a replacement from. She gets a beef straw. We use the Jean Ireland uh, beef pack, and I suppose by by running a breeding program like that, it ensures that we get the maximum uh, high EBI heifers coming through the system, and it gives us an opportunity to sell quality stock too. We generally have uh, customers for those heifer calves once they're weaned. Uh, they won't be advertised this year. They, any, any surplus that will that will be here will be is pre-sold.